Hello there. Well, my name is Ari Rahimzadeh, and welcome to Real World Programming. Today, we're going to talk about inversion of control and dependency injection, two topics that are going to be very important as you work on your programming career. Inversion of control, or IOC, enables you to program with intent rather than implementation. Oftentimes, you'll find yourself programming with implementation first. The problem is, is that if you ever need to switch out how you wanted to do something, for example, logging, if you wanted to log instead to um, a database instead of a file system, then your concrete implementation is a problem because now you got to go write the extra code, change all the stuff that points to that one concrete implementation and point it to the new implementation. That's, that's a lot of work. But... If we invert how we get that, uh, that dependency, so we need logging, but we really only care about the ability to log, then we just ask for something that implements I logging instead of, say, file system logger or DB logger. And using a dependency injector, every time we ask for something that implements I logging, then it will pass us whatever is appropriate, say, the file logger or the database logger or the Windows event logger. It doesn't matter because we don't care about the specific implementation. What we care about is the intent and the interface that is used. Now, I promised real-world examples. I mean, you don't really log a lot of stuff in the real world. In the real world, we do other things like driving cars. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of car I'm about to drive as long as it's a car, right? I could have a Mini, I could have a Ford Focus ST, I could have a Honda Accord. It doesn't really matter. They're all cars and they have the ability to be driven. So the real world example would, to, would be, hey, anytime I want a car, well, then I'm going to go ahead and ask for a car. Kind of like a kid asking his parents for the keys to the car. It doesn't matter which car, it's whichever one is available. And the kid can hopefully, hopefully, drive it. So let's run with a simple example of dependency injection and inversion of control. So following the car example, uh, if we have multiple cars, then as long as a car implements the iCar interface, then we should be able to drive it, right? We don't really care about the implementation, we just care about the intent. So iCar would have a drive function um, that must be implemented, and uh, whenever you uh, create a car, then you would pass it a key, optionally. So let's take a look at that. So here we have a number of different cars. We've got a Mini Cooper, we've got a Ford Focus ST, we've got a Honda Accord, and to be fair, those are all cars, right? And they all implement iCar. And when we instantiate one, um, we'll have whatever constructor, whatever, and then they'll all have a, a, a function called drive, and drive will take in um, a key variable, which will implement another interface that we have called iKey. Now, iKey may have various functions in it, like lock and unlock, etc. But all we care about is that in order to drive, we must pass a key. So, the Honda has it. If we go over to the Mini, the Mini has it. It doesn't matter that it's a Mini. It's a car. And, of course, the Focus ST also has it. So let's take the Mini as an example. With the Mini, all I need to be able to use it is to call the drive function and pass it a key. And then I will be able to start the car and drive away with it. It doesn't matter what kind of key it is as long as it's one that the Mini will be able to take. And then I'll be able to drive it. Again, it's all intent. So the Mini implements iCar the drive function accepts i key and now we're coding with intent rather than actual implementation we get around to implementation but you can see how yeah you know, with the st of course i could choose a different key which of course with the st it uses a fob you know but i could still drive it i could still start it but the implementation of iKey, in this case, is still just iKey. 
So here we have Vic. Vic is a computer program. There we go. Yay. Hi, Vic. Hello. Are you a computer program? Yes. So Vic is a computer program that needs to be able to drive a car. One of the cars. And then I am the dependency injector. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm the dependency injector. So Vic is going to ask, hey, I need to be able to drive a car, so can you give me a car? Ask me for a car. I need a car. Oh, sweet. Well, you can choose any of these cars, but in this particular instance, I'm going to hand you the Mini Cooper. And he'll be like, oh, okay, does it implement iCar? Yep. So now he gets iCar, and then he gets a key. Ah, and then he'll be able to go into that car and then be able to start it. Wow. So something that I didn't really get into in this particular video, and it's a bit out of the scope of this video, is solid design programming practices. And I'm going to put that up on the screen here in just a moment. Um, but the key is whenever you hear some of these new programming terms, I encourage you to go and learn more about them. Uh, just, you know, Wikipedia, what have you, uh, just anything that you're not fully familiar with or not familiar with at all, make sure you go and check that out because there's a, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's great. You learn a lot. And um, I'm, I'm hoping that this series does help you. Well, gosh, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, thank you very much for sticking around for the IOC and DI explanation for the real world. And I'm looking forward to your comments. If you have any questions, please post comments. Subscribe if you get a chance. I hope to be doing a lot more of these in the future. And thank you very much for listening.